Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, some very sad knife news. And um, then we're going to take a look at the TKL Knives MR1. And then our main topic today, things with rings. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week was from someone who goes by Seppuku Sushi 2848. By the way, I love your name, Seppuku Sushi. He's, uh, this was about the Night Stalker knife by TKL Knives. He says, I really think they should have chosen a different name for this otherwise decent knife. I know Night Stalker is technically named after a military group, but when you say Night Stalker, but when you say Night Stalker to someone, they're thinking of somebody else. And if you say Night Stalker knife, well, that's when they start cautiously backing away from you. And uh, a, a well, a well said comment, by the way. That's this knife. Um, which I've been showing off a lot because I carry it so much and love it. Uh, but he raises, Seppuku Sushi uh, 2848 raises an interesting point, one that we talk about a lot here, which is um, the naming conventions for knives. It's hard to name knives. There are a lot of knives out there and they all have names. Uh, and it's hard to come up with something new, but there are companies like Kaiser has a couple of knives that are, are charming little EDC knives that go by names like Aggressor and Assassin. And uh, to me, I'm like, I, I, I'm in the same spot with uh, Seppuku Sushi, but I'm not just talking about telling other people about the knives. I'm, I'm talking about going into court because you uh, were well within your rights to defend yourself with a knife. Uh, but they bring up, well, this knife is called the Night Stalker or this knife is called the Assassin. It's, it's going to paint the wrong picture. So uh, though I love the Night Stalker knife and... Um, Tim Kell, I think, is a great, great dude and a great knife maker. I, I do see what Seppuku Sushi is saying about the names because they could be a little bit too on the nose and uh, might get you in trouble downstream. I'm just saying. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for watching this past week and leaving comments. I always appreciate them. I always also like to hear what you've been carrying. Uh, simple, um, simple pocket check comments are appreciated as well. All right. Well, that being said, thanks again, Seppuku Sushi 2848. Let's get into that pocket check. So today in my front right pocket, I had the Emerson Elvia. I've been carrying this uh, quite a bit lately. Uh, not sure why. You know how sometimes you go through a uh, sort of a renaissance in your knife collection, or maybe that's not the right word, but uh, you 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 start to dig into, the, let's just say it this way, you start to dig into the archives and remember how awesome certain knives are and how excited you were to get these, uh, get the knife. I've been carrying this on and off again after not carrying it for a while for the last couple of weeks, and it's just a pleasure to have in pocket. I think part of the reason I'm carrying it a lot is it's a relatively light and small Emerson, and you know we're in the summer months here, and uh, wearing shorts and things. Uh, I like to have the wave capability. I like to have the tactical uh, self-defense uh, uh, capability, but I also just like a smaller package in the summer. Uh, this is wearing custom micarta, uh, maroon micarta scales from um, Vantage Point Blade Works. That's Tom Engelson. You can check him out on Instagram. He does really, really great scales for... Um, for uh, mostly Emerson's, and then uh, it's it's carrying a wave feature on the back. Um, and uh, that thing, this is an aftermarket, and people have been asking me what it is, and I regret to inform you that I just cannot find how I got that. I know I got it on Instagram, so it's got to be in the records somewhere, but someone help me out. Uh, forget it. I'm remembering. I have the business card, and I stuck it on my wall. Next time, I'll tell you what it is. I'm so sorry. I'll do a special video. That's what I'll do because I've been getting some, some questions since I've been showing this off a lot recently. Okay, Emerson Elvia, look for a short, and I will tell you what, what that clip is or what that wave feature is. Next on me today, the Gunslinger Jack. Awesome, awesome uh, bolster lock 
folder from um, Jack Wolf Knives. This is, you know, he keeps kind of topping himself. And uh, this is in a different realm from the slip joints. But um, I, I don't know. He's he's already, uh, Ben Belkin is already doing such a great job with these, uh, with his first bolster lock folder. I look forward to seeing what they come up with next. Uh, just see, just as an anecdote, I showed this to my father. My folks are visiting. I showed this to my father. And he, man, he went, he went bonkers for this. He loves that carbon fiber, the thinness of the blade and the shape of the blade. And uh, so now I think I know what I'm getting him for Christmas. Uh, probably not this, because I think this one's sold out, but I know you can still get some Jack Wolf knives <coughs> out there. And I think for a while he had a little 15% off uh, sale on them. Uh, I got a comment recently from, now, uh, forgive me, I can't remember who it was, but I know it's someone who comments a lot, comes on Thursday Night Knives, someone that I like and that we have a good, uh, who who always has good comments. And he said something to the effect of, I, I'm feeling like there's so much Jack Wolf knife, Knives talk out there, myself included, uh, that uh, he didn't say myself included. That's parenthetical. That's me speaking. Uh, that I it feels like it's leaving a bad taste in my mouth. It feels like too much of a promotional push like maybe people aren't being genuine about how much they like the knives but they're part of a promotional push and um i, I thought that was a i have felt that before about certain things certainly o knife and o light recently has been sending out a lot of merchandise to people like myself and other reviewers and you've been seeing a lot of o knife stuff because they've had a, a summer sale well yeah in that case you're kind of like their sales force they're saying can I send you some O-Knife O-Lite products? And you're saying, yes, I love them. They're excellent. I can give them away or I can keep them or whatever. But yes, I'll help you. I believe in your product. I'll help you get the word out about your sale. But in the Jack Wolf Knives case, uh, here is someone who very, um, uh, that is Ben Belkin, who's a very astute businessman, a shrewd um, entrepreneur. And he knows that the best way to get the word out about his knives is through knife geeks like myself. Um, but if the knives weren't good, people wouldn't be talking about them. They are really that good. It's just that Ben has gotten them in the hands of a lot of people. And that's smart business. You know, if you're a small company and you don't have a marketing department, you need to rely on, on people who can help you. And, uh, and uh, it's scratch your back and I scratch mine because, yes, I end up with a Jack Wolf knife at the end of it. Um, but if I didn't like them, like many people who have, are many companies who have come to me uh, to show off their knives. If if I don't like it, or if I don't like even the look of it, or don't know the company, or or the company looks like it's making cheesy stuff, I of course will say no. So I totally hear. I'm, I I should have remembered who that commenter were. I'm sorry, but or who that commenter was. But um, I I hear you. In in this case, it's well warranted um, praise from the people who end up with these knives because he's also getting them in the hands of people who like slip joints. So uh, it's a, it's pretty uh, easy math. All right. Next up is uh, the JB knife and tool ditch pick uh, great little knife, very light, uh, thin, excellent for summer carry. Uh, that's a 16th of an inch thin that 1095 and it's heat treated in such a way that uh, the folks over at JB knife and tool, Brian, uh, who was on the show, they, they test these things. They kind of do that British sword test where they bend them uh, back and forth and measure the degrees. And this very thin steel is very springy. And uh, man, this makes for one hell of a nasty and menacing knife. Uh, that thinness and then those two razor sharp edges on that curved surface with this amazing peel ply um, handle that's so ergonomic. This thing is, uh, this is a very, very wicked knife and and i would say that with just one edge you know this is originally just a pickle knife and then he started offering it or they started offering it with a bayonet grip and a full double edge um if this are if this is a single edge blade or some of the single edge blades jb knife and tool puts out uh an amazing amazing edc all-purpose cutting knife but in this case it's kind of set up and and uh profiled to be something a little more defensive but do love that knife. Thank God didn't use it for anything today. Last up for uh, emotional support, a knife that's been getting a lot of carry and also uh, got high praise from my dad who thought it was just the coolest thing. 
is the Acaso Knives Solstice, designed by Andrew Demko and uh, produced by Ocaso Knives out of California. Ocaso Knives is uh, Rick Valdez's uh, brainchild. Rick Valdez was a 20-year uh, executive at Cold Steel. I learned a thing or two about uh, knife making, knife marketing, um, having knives made in amazing factories overseas. And he decided, you know what? I'm going to start my own company. And this one is going to take what I learned about making robust knives, but we're going to translate it into... Um, what do you call it? Gents carry knives, gentlemen's knives. And they are indeed, this thing is super incredibly smooth. I'm going to, it just, every time I open and close it after not carrying it for a few days, I'm always checking the pivot. Is this loose? Cause the action is all that. It is so nice. I love this thing. We went out to dinner last night and man, I, I had this in my pocket. I brought it with me cause I wanted to cut a steak with it. And then the place we ended up going I just don't like the way they prepare their steak. They actually slice it for you. It's like, but you want to put it in here? You want to masticate it too? Um, so that's what I was carrying today. Let me know what you had on you. We, I had the Emerson Elvia in the front right pocket, uh, banging around various pockets. I had the Jack Wolf Knives um, Gunslinger Jack in my waistband. I had the JB Knife and Tool Ditch Pick. And then in my back left pocket for emotional support, flipping and possible steak eating. I had the Ocaso Knives Solstice. What were you carrying? Let me know. Drop it in the comments below. Always love to hear that. You know I say that all the time. Uh, but I love to, to hear what you guys are carrying. So uh, so do that. Let me know what you have. Uh, is anyone carrying an Emerson Elvia? Does anyone have the Super Elvia besides Edgar and uh, or Edwin? I'm sorry. And does anyone have the Elvia with the wave uh, built in? I do not. And um, I'm interested. All right, coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at uh, some sad news, some new knives in Knife Life News. Everyone, stick around. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife, and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. You know, I see that uh, Knife Ship Free Liner every time we record this show. And every time I'm like, oh, they have that? They have that knife? Oh, I got to get that. Well, it's never occurred to me to actually use my own affiliate link to order knives through there. What am I thinking? Okay, I'm going to check it out. I want the Iridium. Everyone knows I want the Kershaw Iridium. Everybody knows. I don't know. Maybe I've been blabbing about it. But uh, do check out Knives Ship Free, one of the greatest websites out there. And um, yeah, they, they kept the torch going. So check it out. All right. I want to talk about a couple of new knives coming out. This first one is from a modern classic. We'll call it that because... It's been so popular <coughs> and taken so many different forms over the years uh, that uh, it's cool to see them do a little retooling of it. I'm talking about the Kaiser Sheepdog. And for 2023, they've changed the Sheepdog a bit. Um, and the first most noticeable thing is the lock. You'll see that they have the clutch lock. Now, the clutch lock is their version of the axis lock or the ambidextrous bar lock. And then you'll notice right away the blade. They changed the blade shape a little bit. The overall profile seems to be the same, but they added a fuller and uh, a deep hollow grind that doesn't look like it comes up as high as the flat grind, but I, I, that could that's just me eyeballing it. Excuse me. And then they've added that comet-shaped opening hole with a thumb stud. So dual opening methods there right next to each other. And... Um, of course, the handle, as you can tell from looking at this picture, is anodized aluminum. So beautiful. They have it in black with a uh, stone wash blade and then purple with a black blade. And man, I just think it's gorgeous, that purple and black. Now, that being said, I'm not so sure I can live with purple knives. I've had a few purple knives in the past, and I just don't seem to carry them, uh, even though I like the color and I like the concept of carrying a purple knife. Uh, the other thing that they have changed here is the blade length. This is kind of in an, in the in-between. This is a 3.15 inch blade. So it's 
kind of between the regular slash original sheepdog and the XL sheepdog. Yeah, look at that. That's a nice shot. Thanks for pulling that up, Jim. That's a that's a beauty. This this knife has done so well over the years, and I think that that retooling, uh, it's a nice, it's a nice evolution. You know, sometimes they'll new coke something. You know, I don't know if anyone here is old enough to remember new coke, but uh, you know they they really they really crap the bet on that one. Um, you know, taking a classic and then putting out a new recipe after you know 150 years or whatever it was, 100 years. Uh, well, in this case, their new Coke is actually an improvement. I think it's pretty damn cool. Uh, but I am not a Kaiser Sheepdog fan. I, I don't own one. Not a huge Cleaver fan. So you all let me know what you think of this retooling, if you have this knife or if you're a fan of this knife. Okay, next up is the Vostid Corsair. Uh, I've seen a number of my um, my knife friends out online have this and love it and have been using it. And um, man, I dig it. I got to say, I'm glad it's 3.25 inches in blade length because that means I don't have to buy it. But I really like the profile. The knife to me looks a bit like a Harzi. Um, It looks a little bit like a Harzi design, um, uh, but I don't think it's derivative or a, or a knockoff or anything like that. Uh, but just a, a really clean uh, design. It looks all business, but it's a it's very... Um, uh, very graceful design. Anyway, that's 3.25 inches of Nitro V steel. Uh, you got that crossbar lock on contoured micarta, the handle, which is, you know, always great. And the interesting thing about this is as we're looking at it right now, uh, when you look at the pommel area, um, it, it slopes down and, um, well, you can see what it looks like right here, but the cool thing about this knife is it ships with an extra backspacer because right now the way we're looking at it, it's on standoffs with uh, flow through construction, but they add a backspacer in there so that you can extend the length of the handle, which is interesting. It adds a lanyard loop option and then that extension um, adds a little bit of area for the palm. That's pretty cool. Uh, I think that's a pretty cool innovation. You can see that here in the picture. Um, that backspacer is the uh, up there with the extra hardware. You can see they give you an extra standoff, stop pin, looks like thumb studs, and a um, um, pocket clip insert filler tab thing. Uh, but they also give you that micarta backspacer, and you can see how that shape extends the handle. So very simple uh, design solution, but a, a cool way to give people a little bit extra if they got the big, uh, you know, meat meat hooks and like lanyards, I like that. It looks like it extends it by about a half inch, maybe, maybe a little less. Um, but a uh, an interesting knife from Vosti, the Corsair. Also, just as an aside, I love the word Corsair. Uh, I used to love the Corsair airplanes, uh, you know, that the Navy flew in that show, Baba Black Sheep, or yeah, was that what it was called? Uh, it was when I was a little kid. It was so cool. Um, but anyway, Corsairs are are uh, are ships, right? They're they're warships from the old days, I think. Anyway, I like the word. <laughs> so Corsair, a cool knife. Okay, next uh, I want to talk about Rosecraft briefly. We did we uh, I showed these. Uh, we talked about this for a second there on Thursday Night Knives last week. But Rosecraft uh, last week just dropped three new models. They are on a tear. They have a lot of knives. You know, relatively new company, about two years old. And they have a lot of models. And it's pretty impressive the, the rate at which they come out uh, with them. Uh, of these three models, the first one, the Waya, I really like this one. The Waya has a, a look. It looks a little bit like the Comet from Kaiser and Paul Monko to me. But this is designed by uh, Rosecraft, uh, head, head, the head of Rosecraft, Andy Armstrong. And it's just a midsize EDC but a handsome one at that. I like the white bolsters with the black uh, G10. You can also get that with green G10 bolsters. I think it looks cool with the black blade. Uh, 3.4 inches, so nearly uh, something I'd uh, I'd be interested in getting. These are OEM'd by Artisan Cutlery. And that's funny because I, t I was under the impression that they were OEM'd by uh, like Rough Rider or someone, just from the font that they use for Rosecraft. I know that's silly. Uh, but just in my mind, without giving it much thought, that's who I thought. But learning from this article, their OEM is Rosecraft, uh, is um, Artisan, and that just makes me happy because I love Artisan knives. So this 
<coughs> excuse me. So this blade steel is AR RPM nine, you know, the artisan uh, budget minded uh, powder metallurgy steel that's proprietary to them. So that's the Waya coming out. Uh, I think this is my favorite of the three that we're talking about here. And then next is the MA one, uh, MA 11 also designed by Andy Armstrong. And this one here is, um, a beast. It looks like anyway, that's a four inch blade, a very interesting, uh, faceted four inch blade, not looking at the spine, or I should say the spine, notwithstanding, it reminds me a bit of a CQC seven by Emerson with that real pronounced chisel tip. Um, yeah, very cool. Um, but so this one is very heavy duty. You know, the, the, uh, Maya that we were just, or the Waya that we were just looking at is only 3.5 ounces. This sucker here is three is uh, 6.8 ounces with that giant uh, with that giant four uh, 3.9 inch blade flipper thumb stud G10 uh, liner locks. I'm assuming that those are full and not weight relieved steel liners to get it up to that 6.8 ounces. Um, but it's also a pretty uh, broad and wide profile, so just more material than a thinner knife. Lastly, uh, this one. <sighs> I like the handle on this one, uh, but but I'm not fond of the blade, but that's just a matter of my personal taste. Uh, this is called the Iris Rex, and um, it's by Hawkins Rose. Cool name. Hawkins Rose is the designer behind this one. Uh, another 3.45 inch knife. This one is uh, AR RPM 9 again, and it's got a um, interesting harpoon tanto blade. I'm not, you know, I'm not crazy about harpoons. And... Um, but anyway, I do like the look of this handle. The handle to me looks a bit like a Sinkovich handle. And uh, we know how comfortable those feel in hand. Um, um, so my saying that I'm not crazy about this knife is, of course, me just saying I'm not crazy about this knife. Uh, but it's made by, it's OEM by Artisans. You know the quality is there. It's uh, designed by Rosecraft. So if you like the design, uh, you know the build will be good. So check it out. All right, so that's it for the... Um, the Rosecraft releases uh, from last week. And now this brings us to the sad bit of news. I'm sure you're all knowing what I'm talking about, but the closure of the Ontario Knife Company in um, in New York, it's a shock to a lot of people, uh, certainly to me. Uh, this came up in conversation by Byron Kennedy on Thursday Night Knives, and I, I was gobsmacked. I just hadn't heard it. And uh, I pulled out my usual excuse. I'm, I'm the youngest in the family, so I'm the last to know. But um, yeah, so this is uh, this is pretty sad news because the Ontario Knife Company has been around 134 years, and um, well, they've made so many knives that we all know and love. Um, but Servotronics is their is the um, company that owns them, and Servotronics is a company that does a lot of uh, um, electronics uh, man, um, contracting for uh, the the um, military industry and that kind of thing and uh they just decided to sell it to um blue ridge knives out of virginia now i i hope that that keeps i i hope that blue ridge knives intends to keep them going but uh the shop itself in franklinville um in franklinville new york is closing and 56 people are losing their jobs and who knows if it'll come back but for right now that's you know that's always devastating news but uh, and I'm not just saying, you know, I, I want to stress the fact that 56 people are losing their jobs. And that is the sad part. The sad part is that a 134 year old company is going out of business in New York, in the States, making knives that we love. Um, you know, obviously the least sad part is what we are feeling. But, you know, it it, it does bear mentioning. And I got to say, my Ontario um, machete, which was made for and, uh, and um, issued to the United States military is one of the best working blades I've ever used. I tell the story about how a, uh, an Oak fell in our woods when my parents lived at the place where I was raised and I happened to be home on vacation and we had to cut this Oak tree, cut up a, a path in this Oak tree. So, cause it fell right across the path and we don't have a chainsaw and we didn't, you know, uh, so I brought out an ax and was hacking away and I was like, my God, this is going to take me a year to do this. So I went and I got my Ontario knife and uh, my Ontario knife machete and I hacked that thing. It was a, it was a big damn Oak tree. And I hacked through that in 
well, in a lot less time than it took the axe because it's a broad, thin, forgiving blade, sharp as hell, and uh, just meant for business. Ontario Knife and Tool, man, I'm, I'm very sad to see them go. I feel like there are a lot of knives in their catalog that I was like, yeah, someday I'll get that, you know, because I like it and, and haven't. So now's the time. If you uh, if you've had your eye on an on an Ontario knife, uh, you know, snap it up now because they're going away, unfortunately. So I just uh, rest in peace. I don't know. I don't know what you say to a company. It's sad, uh, but uh, hopefully uh, Blue Ridge Knives brings them back. All right. Well, uh, that is it for Knife Life News. Not to end that on a uh, on a down note. So you can look forward to all the new knives that are coming out. We're very happy about. Uh, if you're interested in helping support the show, you can do that on Patreon. You can scan the QR code right here, or you can go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon and find out the kind of tiers of support we have and the kind of ways you stand to benefit from you helping us. So go check out uh, Patreon on the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. I'll repeat that complicated address. That is the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkie's merchandise at thenifejunkie.com slash shop. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Uh, I have the good fortune of being buddies with Casey Spirion of uh, Knives Fast and, of course, Tempest Knives. Even if I weren't friends, I'm sure he'd, he'd be sending this over to me. But um, this is the prototype for his jet stream, the Tempest Knives jet stream. Um, there we go. It, this is his going to be his third production release. Let's see. Can I get focus here? His third production release. And uh, there, well, since it's focused for close, let's be close. Uh, so let's take a look at this. Uh, this prototype has D2 blade steel, which will be 154 CM in the production run. And that really nice big opening hole. You've got a nice uh, belly. Uh, it's a very gradual belly. And you have an effective uh, line of uh, straight edge right there, right before that belly. Um, you have a tip slightly below center line, which is great for those utility cutting chores and that kind of thing. A very high flat grind, which makes this thing very thin and slicey. And then you have the proprietary pivot, which I love. Looks like the hubcap of a high performance vehicle. And then this anodized contoured titanium with the liner lock and the sculpted titanium pocket clip. A couple of notes that uh, KC sent along. They will be adding micro milling, which looks very beautiful in the, um, in the uh, titanium surface there so that you have a little bit more gription. I did notice when I pulled this out initially, I was like, oh, it felt good in hand. It was like, it feels so smooth, but I could see how with sweaty hands, it could be too smooth. So um, the micro milling is a good idea and it's a nice aesthetic choice. Uh, a couple other changes besides the 154 CM blade steel and that micro milling, they're going to, Casey's going to soften this landing spot right here. I love this kind of low profile flipper because I love flipping open knives. Don't always love a flipper there. Um, but the way this is built, uh, this is one of my favorite types of flippers, super low profile. Just grab that and pull. But I guess uh, others who have had this before have complained a little bit about this point and that your finger lands on that point and maybe it's uncomfortable. And the funny thing is, is I did not notice that and wouldn't have noticed it until I read that. And I was like, oh, they're right. And now every time I flip it, I'm like, yeah, I'm glad he's going to change that. So it just goes to show uh, the power of suggestion uh, or my weak mind. Uh, you, you choose. Uh, nice big opening hole for that for that uh, um, reverse flick and just so incredibly comfortable in hand. Nice long blade. This one I think is, well, this is the biggest knife that that I think KC has put out thus far. Uh, you've had the pinion and the microburst and then the, the prototype for the Mach 51. 
which probably had a blade length approaching this, but definitely not a blade size. Uh, what else? Oh, oh, uh, something I wanted to comment on. You know, as I mentioned, my parents were visiting. My dad, uh, you know, I told you he really liked the Ocaso knives. My mom picked, picked this up and she's like, this is beautiful. I was like, oh, yeah, it is beautiful. You know, uh, a buddy of mine, you know, a YouTuber who's making knives did this. And she said, oh, that's amazing. And I said, it's called the Jetstream. And she said, that's the perfect name. And and I agree. It has a sleek a sleekness to it. And, and I know that that color, uh, the beautiful blue Anno color there reminds me of the sky. So I could see jet stream being, um, uh, yeah, I agree. Great name filler tab, all the good stuff. Uh, this is, uh, this is this, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, um, uh, pre-order for this is open and it's, it's only 130 bucks. So this is something to jump on, uh, post haste. And, uh, the last thing I wanted to mention about this, Oh, Kubi knives. Kubi knives is the OEM for this. And if you've ever held a Kubi knives knife in your hand, you know they know how to build a knife. So if you like the design, you'll love the knife. So check that out. That is the Jetstream by Tempest Knives. The other new knife I got this week, <coughs> pardon me, pardon me, people, is from TKL Knives. This is one I've been looking forward to. This is the MR1. The MR1 is the Pical version of the Night Stalker, the knife we were talking about earlier. And uh, here it is in, in full, in all of its glory. Uh, I, love the, um, I love the overall package of the Night Stalker. And uh, this is the perfect way to go, uh, to go Pical. Yeah, you know, you already have this great design. Well, just grind it on the other side. You know what? Let's talk about ringed things right now. Since this is part of our main topic, let's just go right into it and talk about ringed things. And this will be the first knife we talk about, this MR1, because there's been a long period of time since I interviewed Ed Calderon that I've been very uh, hesitant to use ringed knives because he talked about uh, poorly designed ring knives and how damaging they can be to the finger that you stick through that ring, especially in uh, the application that you most that you think most pertinent for a ringed knife, which is self-defense and fighting. OK, and through different testings that he does, uh, he calls it. Uh, what does he call it? Like. Um, uh, I, I, forgive me, I can't remember, uh, like f like live medium testing or something like that. He's got a dead pig hanging and they they're stabbing it you know in in his class and and seeing what it's really like to make contact with something and have a knife go in and ha and while that thing is moving trying to simulate a struggle um every you know things change when things are moving and the situation is dynamic and when you have a ringed knife on you um he has seen Ed Calderon has seen the knife get out of people's grip and 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 skin the finger coming off. They call it something nasty. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, uh, jacketing or something. Dressing out the finger. Just pulling out, pulling off all the flesh with that ring. Because when you had it and you were training, you weren't thinking of that blade now being stuck in something that is moving away from you or moving in a weird direction. So that was a big... I don't know, deterrent for me to get ringed things. Um, and then slowly I started to realize for myself, well, a lot of it has to do with the design of the ringed things. And so talking about these TKLs, um, for my hand, and I think for a lot of people's hands, these have been designed properly. The rings are are placed well uh, to align in the, in the fist so that you don't have to like, change your grip to actually accommodate that ring like you do when there's a ring plopped directly on top when the when the when the ring is plopped directly on top i think it's for a different purpose and i'll tell you about that in a minute but with the uh with the night stalker um this one gets a lot a lot a lot of daily carry because it is so small and with the night i mean it's the knife isn't that small but the whole package is so discreet it it rides on my waistband up front. This is the wrong sheet. 
rides on the waistband up front so easily, hides under a T-shirt, and just sits on the flat of my belly right there. Boom, right there. Where my, uh, you know, you're looking down your belly, that's where the knife is. And it's perfect. So I love it because it's a very nice, very big, or not very big, but very fixed, capable blade that you can have on you all the time. But when you're going to pull it, that ring is great for extracting the knife. Um, I know that's uh, low hanging fruit for a ringed thing. That's one of the things we use it for. But the more I carry it, the more I see, yeah, that's a, a really great benefit to the ring is for the just the pull factor. And then when you pull it out and you make a fist, a tight fist, this design, this t design fits my hand perfectly. I have a medium sized hand. I've had this, uh, I've shown this off to people with large hands. It fits really well in large hands. I almost feel like better um, because, you know, uh, there's a little bit of space for me, um, especially in my left hand, which is a little bit smaller than my right hand. But there's a little bit of space in that forward finger choil that would allow a larger hand to expand while also having a big, big enough ring to accommodate that finger. This one is AEBL. Uh, first time I think they used AEBL, certainly on the Night Stalker, TKL Knives' most selling knife. Uh, their little attitude adjuster on the back also can act as a glass breaker or a, even a pry thing, but I don't imagine anyone actually using it that way. Uh, the handles are interchangeable. They have all different sorts of handles you can get for these uh, different patterns of, of G10, but they always have, unless it's micarta, the micarta scales, which they don't seem to sell too much of. It always has, or they don't seem to push the micarta that much. These little um, notches cut out. He calls them the grenade pattern, and they are so great. They're so simple, little notches cut out there, but your fingers land in them all over the place and just make that grip even better. Now, we're talking about things with rings, and when I'm in a forward grip with a, with a ringed knife, I almost never put my pinky in there. To me, that doesn't feel comfortable, and it feels vulnerable, uh, like that pinky could, could really get jacked up somehow. So I like rings because uh, in the forward grip because they, they give you such a nice uh, wide pommel. So if you just grip it like a regular knife and use that ring as a retaining pommel or bird's beak, it works really well. Okay, so that's the Night Stalker. Now it's it's doppelganger, it's it's evil cousin or twin brother here, the the uh, MR1 designed for a Marine Raider unit in California, hence the MR, um, is the exact Night Stalker blank. So if you line them up exactly, it's the Night Stalker blank, and then it's profiled differently. Not profiled differently, um, ground differently. Beveled and edged on the opposite side with that long swedge on the top. So I'm going to do this with my right hand again where it fits best. So again, I have something like this. You do not want a loose, nuanced grip. You want to hold on to this thing like it's a hammer. And uh, here it fits in my hand like a hammer. and. Uh, and I feel I feel very confident with this knife as a Pakal style knife. That tearing motion, um, the handle is is fully locked in, and um, so I think the translation from this to this is an excellent one. Can you use it in saber grip? Sure, you can if you if you think about how you're going to use it. This is how the ditch pick is, or the um, clinch pick was designed to be used and and carried in the forward forward grip but but uh, edge up so that when you're in a car and you're sitting in a parked car and there's a drug deal going down and the guy next to you starts you know grabs you or something you can pull that out of your belt have the edge up and and cut the person away from you that's actually how it was designed and uh you know a lot of undercover uh mr douglas i think his name is a lot of undercover uh work went into the design of that knife so yeah you can use this in that way too it just does not come intuitively to me now what i've had to do is put a little bit of gaffers tape right here on the ring of the mr1 so that when i'm carrying these knives um i can tell which one it is by feel say i'm uh, in a long uh you know say all week long i'm carrying these and i switch it up and i feel like carrying the other one i just 
I want that physical reminder that I've got the Pakal. So that's what this is. Uh, last, uh, another thing about the ring here. Well, let's set these aside and, and move on to the next ringed knives. But the rings uh, are, are very often used as poles, um, just something to access the knife. Maybe not necessarily intended uh, as, um, as a finger uh, holder. What do you want to call it? As a finger ring, but more as a pole ring. Okay, next, folding karambit. How do I feel about folding karambit as a form? I like it, uh, but mm, I don't know. Maybe a lot, maybe a, uh, you know what, what, what gives me the most pause on this Fox Knives 599 uh, Karambit is the fact that it's a thin liner lock. And yeah, this, this knife is intended to cut this way because the edge is forward. But in karambit use, if you train with a karambit, you're doing a lot of this stuff and hitting with the back of the blade and scooping and trapping and doing all sorts of stuff. You want to be 1000% confident that that's not going to fold on you and cut your damn fingers off because that would be a horrible, horrible fate for those three fingers. You know, if this received any force on the spine um, that said, it's pretty good lockup on this. Um, it comes right to the center. And, you know, I, I, I haven't spine whacked it. I do have the um, trainer right here, which has, uh, you know, the same build. And I've used this in, in uh, class and it's never folded on me. So I, I guess I should put some confidence, more confidence in this. But just in general, um, folding karambit makes me a little nervous. But this one... Uh, is one of my favorites because of the size. It fits my hand perfectly. Again, that ring is placed in a in a very good um, orientation, at least for my fist. I can make a full fist and squeeze tight without um, having it without having it uh, realign my my fingers. This is how you want to grip a karambit. You want that ring up over. You, know, you see this a lot and. You know, I don't know. I've never been in a karambit fight, but I, I I was taught that this is not the best way to go about it. You want a fist. You want that ring over that uh, last metatarsal on your on your uh, finger there. And then if you have to flip it and do your stuff, whatever you flip it, it'll move on your finger to where it needs to be, you know, in the crook crook of that joint. But really, you want to grip it tight and you want that finger through the ring and you want it in a sort of a hammer fist grip. I think that this is a very elegant design. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful design. This one is made in Italy by Fox Knives, and it's got, yes, N690, of course. It's N690. And um, one thing that I did notice about this design that I'm not crazy about is the flipper, period. There are lots of things about the flipper I do not like. A, <coughs> pardon me, this is on washers and is not a good flipper. It is not intended to really i think you really have to whip it open that said i don't care about a flipper on a karambit anyway i i want a wave feature on a karambit and the ability to have the clip on that side on the traditionally left hand side so you can draw it out and have it ready who wants to pull out a karambit flip it open and then change their grip you'll be dead at that point um but what i don't like uh, also about that flipper is how it does not line up with the contours of the handle it's it sort of randomly pokes out there and then when you're training with your friends that kills that really gouges and tears people's skin and this is supposed to be a trainer that's you know so if i cared enough if i carried this a lot i would be i i would somehow figure out how to grind this down a little bit um you can't you can't delete it completely because uh it it's what engages the stop pin when it's closed but yeah, this is enough that maybe on the, uh, well, I feel like it could be an issue on the tactical version too. You're saying, well, Bob, on the, on the live blade version, don't you want that flipper to gouge and tear and do all that? Yeah, it's going to get hung up. It's not what you're there for. You want that slicey blade. You don't want to get hung up on the flipper tab, even if it does hurt the other guy. All right. So Fox 99 Karambit, 599 Karambit and Trainer. Um, there was a t point in time when I was trying to get rid of this pair, and now I'm glad I didn't. It's just cool to have. I'll almost never carry it. Um, not really doing any karambit training these days, but it's a good 
it's a good package to have. All right. So in that uh, vein, uh, this is a different sort of folding karambit. This was a gift from my awesome brother, Vic. Thank you, Vic. Uh, this is the super karambit from Emerson. A couple of things about this. Of course, it's got the wave. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that on this knife, which I'm going to keep out for contrast. This also has a wave. Um, but this knife feels really good in forward grip. It is a super karambit, so it's pretty damn big uh, for a karambit. Feels really good in this forward grip. Of course, you know, you can if you want uh, get a little bit more standoff reach and put your finger through there, but I don't. I don't. Um, you'll notice that it's got a chiseled tip. That is one of the issues with a karambit. If it comes to too fine a point on all dimensions, it's going to break. And what I mean by all dimensions is you want it thin and slicey because you want the thing to cut at the slightest uh, touch. But you don't want the thing to break. So with that chisel, you're getting the same thing. And you can punch and thrust with it. And still that is sharp and it's going in the right direction. Um, but for the main purpose of the karambit, which is this sort of slicing and pull cutting and stuff like that, that tip is just perfect. 154 cm blade steel. This is a, you know what? This is after they stopped dating them, unfortunately. Uh, you can switch it to the other side on this one. Uh, holes for speed uh, or manipulation, uh, speed holes. Um, so you can kind of reorient, at least I think that's what they're there for. Um, they don't look cool. I'll tell you that. So I don't think they're there for that, uh, in my opinion, because I don't like seeing the titanium liner under there, uh, chisel ground. So totally flat on that side, wickedly sharp. This thing is insanely sharp. And then something that you're going to see right away. If you contrast the 599 from Fox and the Emerson is the width of the ring. Look at how thin the ring is on the um fox it is radiused nicely so that it feels comfortable in the hand but the thickness of the emerson gives you a different kind of stability uh my buddy ian who i train with now he's my teacher now but when i was was just training with him back way back in the day he had one of these um he had the trainer version of the regular karambit and uh we would trade sometimes and i'd use his and he'd use mine um, but that I, I always liked the way this felt better, that that thicker um, engagement on the on the finger there always felt more confident, like it wasn't going to do this and go side to side and break my finger that way. Not that I necessarily felt that out of the gate with this, but once I felt the Emerson and held the Emerson, it uh, it changed things for me. Um, another really cool knife I need to carry more uh, is this Karambit. Um, when it's, when my fist is fully, um, uh, I'm sorry, when my fist is fully tightened, there is a lot of extra room on this. So this would be, uh, good for the big, big dudes with big hands. I gotta say though, the opening hole, I'm not so sure, uh, with the big hands, uh, if the opening hole is uh, generous enough, but an interesting looking blade, no doubt kind of looks like an elephant or an anteater or something, uh, some sort of marsupial. Cool, cool knife. Uh, that's the Emerson Super Karambit. All right. Next up, this Karambit uh, spent years in the shower. This is our, this was our shower knife for a while. You can see some of that uh, soap in there. I just could not scrub out for this purpose. But uh, this thing, I guess, started to degrade in the shower a little bit. But this is one of the... Uh, FGX series knives from Cold Steel. FGX is the material that they use here. It's a ballistic nylon uh, that it works great as a one-time self-defense tool. And uh, they make a lot of different models of these uh, from the models that they already produce. This is the version of their Wicked Karambit, the Tiger Claw. One of those knives that I flirted with getting for for years and years and never did. Um, this is a knife that my fist is in a full hard uh, uh, um, fist and it is not realigning the knuckles. This is perfect the way this is set up. And then you got this little uh, landing spot for your thumb here, which is excellent. It's also an excellent way to arrest motion. If you're, this is going to be hard to do under the camera, but if you're flipping it 
and you flip it forward, it's a great way to stop the blade from continuing. <laughs> you know, it's going to stop anyway, but it gives you a nice landing landing spot there. Um, do I need a shower knife? Am I Jason Bourne? Do I have people, assassins coming after me? Uh, not that I know of, but I think we could all benefit from, <laughs> I mean, having, look, so Lynn Thompson's got this thing, never unarmed. You should never be unarmed because is a tiger ever unarmed? No, they always have their claws, always have their teeth. Does that mean you got to walk around the house with an AK? No, but should you have a pocket knife on you? Probably. Uh, someone comes busting through the door. I don't know. I don't know where you live. I live in a very nice neighborhood, but stuff like that happens and it happens in neighborhoods like mine. So, uh, if you're in the shower and something happens, you know, what the hell are you going to do? Throw sh shampoo in their eyes, kind of try and make it stick. That's actually probably a pretty good idea, but you also want to be able to stick this in them too, to give yourself some space. You know, that's what knives and defensive knives are a, a lot about not necessarily about finishing people off. It's about creating space. That is like the number one priority in, in martial arts in fighting or fight ending. And it's like, I don't want to be a fighter. I want to be a fight ender. And you know, whether that's running away, getting out of the situation or ending the fight in another way, having that knife on you creates distance, creates space, which allows you to do other things. Maybe it's kick. Uh, or maybe it's run, or maybe it's draw your your pistol or or something else, you know. But think of the knife as a space maker, uh, as well as you know, if you're thinking of it as a self defense tool, it's a space maker, as well as a life taker, he heaven forbid, you know. So yeah, so think about getting a plastic knife and keeping it in your shower. Uh, your wife might think you're nuts. Your girlfriend might think you're nuts. Uh, but you know or your roommate, whoever you live with, might think it's crazy, but no, it's not. It's there uh, in case it's ever needed. So this is the FGX um, Tiger Claw Karambit. And by the way, on these knives, they have, uh, with this one in particular, this has a rubberized grip. You can kind of see the difference between this and this. This grip is rubberized, and then the rest of this plastic is kind of smooth and hard. All right, that's the FGX Karambit. Now, I have one other FGX I want to show you, uh, and this is the Ringed Dagger. Ringed Dagger. Now, look at the placement. Here, I'll, I'll just use these two cold steels for an example. Look at the placement of the ring on the Ringed Dagger. So everything I've shown you so far goes to great pains uh, to accommodate a, a fist, you know, to accommodate this shape. So it's curved to fit that shape, and then the ring is canted out over the end um, in an angled way so that your ring, uh, your finger can go in there without, without being, without realigning your knuckles on this one. This is how, this is what would happen. If you tried to use this like a karambit, this is what would happen. This is how your hand would look. It would hurt. It would not be effective. And you would, you would break something in here, uh, after any stress, if you tried to thrust it. So this is not that kind of a ring. We see this on many knives out there, like Tor Knives has a knife right now uh, that has a ring placed just like this, a handle similar to this with that sort of wasp waisted shape. Um, but that knife is not a dagger. The Tor Knives is not a dagger. It's a, a regular sort of drop point. So it, it's a weird recipe. This is great on a dagger. What is this ring for? That ring is for your thumb. You put your thumb through there and you get incredible power on a downward thrust, on a downward strike. Uh, you get, I guess, maybe some retention, but this is not about retention. It's about extraction and it's about power. You're, you know, you could do this and have your your thumb on, um, on, a, on the pommel. That's what I'm always talking about with reverse grip. Always put that thumb on the pommel so that your hand doesn't slide down if you hit something hard when striking. This is a variation of that, but your your thumb is captured. So that is what you do with a ring dagger. Um, and this is another one of those FGX. Uh, so very, very hard ballistic nylon. And then uh, the serrations are pretty damn sharp. I mean, I think you could do some. You could do something with these, uh, of course, not a not a cutting tool uh, unless you're cutting something soft, uh, but not a, not a cutting tool because these are not hardened steel. 
Uh, right here at the tip, I like what they did with the tip, reinforcing it, making it extra strong for punching through whatever you're, you know, stabbing into. Funny thing about these, um, there are videos out there with Lynn Thompson talking about them. And um, he talks about having like a whole bunch of these on his property stashed in flower pots, you know, uh, nailed to trees or whatever, just like randomly placed around his uh, his property so that if he's out there and uh, someone's someone attacks him and one of the like 12 giant knives he has on his belt isn't available he can just whoosh, grab that and and go to town because these things uh don't rust they don't rot they just you know maybe this rubber handle is getting a little you know you can feel it getting a little tacky but um they will they will endure Okay, so these are the FGX. All right, also from Cold Steel, we got the, the double agent. The double agent has two, uh, two rings, just barely feels comfortable. Now, I had to add this jute twine and fatten that up. And, and when, once I fattened it up, it, it changed the levels of my fingers. Now I can make a full fist with this. But this 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 makes me nervous. Having two fingers captured really makes me nervous. But this is a very cool knife in any case. Very thin and uh, hollow ground OS 8 blade steel. This thing's just wickedly sharp. This was a, um, a wedding, a best man. Well, I wasn't best man, but uh, I was in the wedding party. It was a wedding party gift for from a friend of mine. Very cool. The double agent has this sheath that you have to press whoops sorry about that you have to press the button to be able to extract the knife an interesting choice um not my favorite way of doing it all right next up is another ringed pick haul this one is a semi-custom even though it's that's what i call it semi-custom from uh, bastion cove uh bastinelli knives or bastinelli creations this one is one knife of four in a four knife series designed uh, in collaboration with Doug Markaita. This is the Pical version. Again, look at how, how, look at the accommodation for the ring. It's canted out over the handle. I'll use my right hand again. So you get a pretty good grip. This one is pretty good. Um, it, and what I mean by that, I think that, I think it's excellent. I think the way my hand fits it, it rides up a little bit closer here but when i'm up up closer and i leave a little room down here which doesn't really matter then it fits my hand very comfortably a great sickle shaped hawkbill blade this is n690 co a cool thing a cool thing about uh ringed picals is that if you're doing the pical thing and you're flipping it around you can extend it like this and have a a, a hell of a slasher because it doesn't take much for that tip to do damage and uh, you just need to graze over your your opponent and uh, you've got a nice long knife uh this uh tsukamaki wrap uh this japanese wrap here done by bastien it's beautiful and and uh, very hard because it's been epoxied and it fits the hand great all right sheath is a little troublesome to me this is a hard difficult one for me to carry i don't like the way it sags down like this. It almost looks phallic and I don't know. I, I don't like, I don't like the grip. So I, I, I got to figure or not the grip, but I don't like that the way it hangs. So I, I just have to figure out a better way to mount it on my belt. Um, but yeah, beautiful, elegant looking knife. Okay. Uh, let's see on the list here, nearly last of <laughs> the black rock knives, monkey thumper. Uh, this thing is a wicked, wicked cool knife. I love this thing. This is a custom, one of my first custom knives ever. I got it, uh, asked him for the double edge because I figured if it's a ring thing and this ring fits great in hand. And even if you don't use the ring, it's so comfortable. That squared off shape makes for just a great pommel there. Uh, so this is an awesome knife with or without the ring. And... Um, <clears throat> It's a. It's not the easiest one to carry. It's a little heavy, a little thick, uh, but I just put on this discreet carry uh, concepts clip, and uh, it works pretty well in the waistband at the three o'clock. So I think as the temperatures start to drop, I'm going to start uh, integrating this back into my carry. I used to carry this scout style 
and uh and then it just it was a little bit too much <laughs> so i got to figure out another way uh again you benefit from the ring on this one uh in both uh extensions or flipping you know doing that manipulation and a great sheath here by the way if you like the monkey thumper fox knives does a production version of it it is not double edged unfortunately but maybe you could double edge it yourself all right uh before i get to the very last one i just want to briefly show these knuckles uh i as i was going through my ringed things i didn't call it ringed knives so i could bring these in uh these things are cool i i like them more as uh as show pieces or paperweights than i do actually using them and it's because they're a little too big for my hands now this station nine number three um once i put this uh wrap on there that very cheerful pink and blue <laughs> wrap pink and teal wrap it actually fits my hands better it gives me a little bit more purchase but i still feel like um like i would need knuckles if i were to use knuckles and really go to town with them i would want something slightly uh better fitting my hand these mcnees aluminum knuckles mcnees knives he's a great guy jonathan mcnees and I dig his knives and I dig these knuckles. They're just incredibly uncomfortable. And it's not just because of the wide finger splay, which I can live with, but it's this squared off palm piece. <laughs> uh, I hit my heavy bag with this a couple of times when I first got it. And I feel like I did more uh, pain to my hand than I did the heavy bag. Uh, but still just a cool thing to have, no doubt. And I bet I could figure out some way to wrap this, but you know, it's not like I carry them and use them. So, um, they are items of interest. And I'd love to have a, a uh, an old version of that, like a, um, what do you call it? Like an antique version of it. Okay. Uh, and then I also want to show this off. This is the Bone Daddy Blade Works Axis. Also kind of a ringed thing uh, because of these rings. You can, you can use this as a knife. And then you can mount it on a shaft here and have it as an axe. Uh, we had the we had uh, the guy and gal from Bone Daddy Blade Works. Right now, their name is escaping me, but that's that's me. Had them on talking about this very cool knife, and there are so many different ways to use it, and a lot of them incorporate these rings here. So I wanted to show these a bit. I, I mentioned that you could use it as a punch, punch, as a weapon like this, and they were like, "Yeah, we weren't intending that. We just like camping." I was like, "Okay, cool." <laughs> but just so you know, if you're camping and you got to punch someone. Uh, okay, so last up on this list is, you're probably guessing what it is. This is the one that fits me perfectly. It's the U.S. 1918 Trench Dagger. This trench knife is uh, is a genuine one. My brother got it for me. Thank you, Vic. And uh, this has four rings that fit my hand perfectly. I, you know, I grip this in my hand, and I'm like, man, in 1918, they didn't have all the bovine growth hormone in the milk so people's hands were a little bit smaller and uh this fits me great it's great in this uh forward kind of grip like if you're thrusting because of how they uh mitered out this choil and angled everything is angled in towards the center uh in in a way that is just it's perfect for me and uh i i i also think that much bigger hands would fit in this very well because of the ability to expand out diagonally you know, that way and that way. Still bringing your fingers close together here, but allowing you space here. I just feel like it's really well designed and really well considered. And then these rings have spikes on them for, uh, you know, for all sorts of trench activities. And then this double-edged blade and uh, the heavy bronze handle. This thing is amazing and definitely, definitely in my knife collection, one of my very absolute uh, most prized knives in the collection. So I've come around a little bit on ringed things. Uh, I, I got uh, really shy about them for a while uh, after being hot and heavy with karambits. Um, but I'm coming back around. It really does matter about the design, uh, the ergonomic design of the thing. So um, uh, I, I would say if you are looking for a ringed thing, either look at this list. I can vouch for them personally uh, for my medium sized hands. But Whatever, whatever you, however you choose it, make sure that you hold it in your hand, you grip it, and you really feel it. And know, know that if you have a ring that's sitting right on top of the knife like that, it's not a karambit. It's for a different purpose. So, uh, 
So do your research, but uh, don't turn your back on the ringed things. All right. Thanks for uh, coming down this uh, avenue with me. It is a strange one, but uh, an interesting one. And um, well, also, this is very exciting news. I'm going to be breathless. Be sure to join us on Sunday for my interview with Lynn Thompson, Cold Steel founder and president for 40 years. What a great guy. What an interesting guy. And um, I have to say that I think I, I, I should say I've seen a million him on the web a million times in interviews and whatever. And I've never seen him open up like this. So it's awesome. Please join us then. Also, make sure you join us next Wednesday for the next midweek supplemental. And then, of course, tomorrow night, Thursday night, Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm-hmm.